Hey guys, Tomboy61, and today we have the Colbert, the rental version, because, well, it's not in the game any other way. And let me tell you, I've been having a blast with this ship. It feels a niche and legendary that needed to be filled, and that is why I am absolutely loving it. Now, I'm not going to be doing a full review on it today, just going to kind of give my thoughts on it, and that's because, well, Wargaming has already said, based on data from this rental period, they may make changes to Colbert, so I don't want to make a big review and then have, have it be just completely wrong because, well, they decided to nerf or buff it or, you know, keep it the same. We'll, we'll see what they end up doing. But as a, as a protection against that, we're just going to go ahead and talk through it. Now, of course, you can go ahead and pick up the Colbert for 2 million credits over in the shop. Absolutely worth the, the fun just to experience this ship and just to kind of have a blast. Alternatively, also for that same price in the shop, you could pick up the Winter Adventures, which is something else I highly recommend you do if you have the spare cash. It's a set of assignments that just basically ask that you get top three or top four in the battle based on your position. And you get a ton of camos, two insignias, 30 of the promotional orcs, and one of the Super Santa crates. So I think that's completely worth it if you are in the market or if you have a spare two million lying around, which, well... I definitely did for that, especially because I got I got to try. Got you, it's super Santa Cray. Got to got to gamble on on that uh, on getting one of the super ships. But or even if it's a regular ship. Anyways, um, Colbert. Let's go ahead and talk about her. She is absolutely unique. Well, not fully unique, but you could play her one of two ways. One, you could hug an island and uh, he spam from behind that, or you could have fun and live a little. And just be an open water gunboat, and that's what I've been playing her as. I've been running Rue uh, with a very, with very much the kind of full agile build of double rudder and all the maneuverability perks on Rue with Baltimore as one of the inspirations. Like it is absolute blast to have an open water cruiser in the game to have what feels like kind of like an annoying Achakov at the tier, uh, but. You know, I feel like you are definitely a little bit more susceptible to hits. And let's talk about taking hits in the Colbert. Uh, it does have a 32 millimeter bow, which means it is able to protect itself when dead on from nearly everything in the game except Yamato. Uh, it's a battleship caliber kind of bow, which is incredible on a cruiser. Now, if you play in this style, uh, you don't really get the benefits of it, of being out up front, and and uh, you're, you're just not going to get the benefits. One, because that superstructure, very large, and uh, very thin armor, and the plunging shots will absolutely go through the deck, and you will receive full pen damage. So you kind of have a risk-reward of, you can play it up close, and where you need to be ultra-precise in your positioning, and when you do that, you can absolutely wreck people with those guns, or you can play at long range and try to play the fishtail, get out of the way, and uh, just kind of dodge everything that's incoming. And you can also have fun that way, and that's why I really do like Colbert. It's it's a versatile ship and one that opens up a niche to uh, to to play that wasn't currently available at legendary tier. Right? We didn't have a legendary ship. That could do this and now we have one and I, I think it's absolutely really great for the tier that we now have this ability to kind of you know just have a little bit of fun at the tier um i will say i have definitely been dev struck a number of times in this vessel because uh the armor like i said if, if you give it if you're the wrong way around you have a exposed citadel that sits high in the water and it will absolutely tear you apart beyond that let's go ahead and talk uh through its other kind of consumables of course we get sonar which is nice for when you need to push dds you have the speed boost which is beautiful and you get three heals which is more than you would usually expect they're not they're not minotaur heals they don't print another ship but they do heal a good chunk and if you run rue with fully packed you get four heals which heals you back about a halfway to two thirds of your health, um, which is absolutely useful. You don't have a huge hit points pool, but um, the maneuverability is very much the armor of the ship. 
as well as the armor is the armor of the ship. <laughs> Either way, um, Colbert, as far as where she is right now, I think she's in a pretty good place, all things considered. And that's because, well, it's not like she has access to IHF, IHFE. She doesn't have equal of power. Uh, none of the uh, French cruiser commanders or none of the French commanders overall have equilibrium of power. Or, and what that means is her guns don't often pen a lot of things. You can get, get into superstructures. You can get a good chunk of damage here and there. But if you're going up against a well-armored target, those shells are going to shatter. You're going to get a lot of shatters in this game. So fire is kind of your secondary way to deal damage, but you have a fairly low fire chance. I think 7% base, and uh, depending on who who you are running as far as a commander goes, you can increase that, but it is not a very high fire chance. You can see we have 336 hits right now and only three fires. Like there, there is not a huge fire chance with this ship. So you do kind of have to rely on either a being able to hit superstructures, but you will, but then you kind of get superstructures that will get damp damage uh, saturated. You'll see that coming up with a Bismarck. We nearly we let that Bismarck get away, but we took out a ton of its health from that superstructure. And later in the match, we will continue to pound the superstructure, and there just won't be health for us to be able to take out of it. And that's kind of the the thing with Colbert is you can be annoying um, and. You have to kind of pick your shots, and uh, the gun's not the, the greatest caliber, but boy, are they fun. Boy, are they fun. No radar on the ship, which I don't think it really needs. I think giving it a radar would be a bit too powerful. Uh, so I, I think as far as where it is right now, I am, I'm, I'm liking where it is, especially given its weakness in plunging fire. I think we're, we're probably in a fairly good spot as far as as overall uh, setup for this ship. And I hope Ouija kind of keeps it the same. They, I hope they keep, I hope Wargaming keeps it the way that it is right now. Cause it, it's a fun ship. It really is. So yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on Colbert. I look forward to it coming to the Bureau. Has it fixed legendary matchmaking? No, but has it made it a lot better? Hell yeah. And that's, that's all I can really ask for. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.